So you're telling me you've been designing in Figma for however long and you still don't know how to use auto layout? Big mistake, big, huge. If this is you, you've come to the right place, my friend. By the end of the session, you are going to be a Figma auto layout master. As usual, you've got a Figma file in the description if you wanna join along, and you've also got a link to sign up to Figma if you've never used it before. Let's jump in. Firstly, let's talk about what an auto layout even is. So an auto layout is a property we put on a frame to tell that frame's children how they should act. Huh? Now I know this might sound a bit confusing, but let's break that down a second. If the frame is the parent and any element inside of it is its child, then auto layout basically tells all the children how they should act how much spacing they should have between one another, how much padding they should leave between them and their parent frame. What happens when a new child is born? Do we squish to accommodate for it? Do we make room for it in the next row or next to us or above us or below us? So that's just the basics of it. Let's jump into the file and play around with this. So in our file, you'll have these four letters. I'm gonna select all of them together and I'm going to add an auto layout. The keyboard shortcut is Shift and A. And you see straight away, I've got all of this going here. And you can also see in the layers panel that now it's called frame one I'll change that to letters but you can see that the graphic representation is now those three lines which shows us that this is an auto layout let's look in detail at the different things we can control about an auto layout here in the design panel so the first thing that we can control is the layout of the auto layout and that's controlled with these arrows over here we can see that the arrow right now is going horizontally and that means that the children are going next to each other if I select this child this D over here and I duplicate it command D you'll see I've got a new child and that new child is going on its right because it knows that that's the rule, right? We have to keep going horizontally. But if I change this layout to vertical instead, all of these letters now are going underneath each other vertically rather than horizontally. And if I add, let's say I'll duplicate the C, Command D, you see that it keeps adding them to the bottom. Now the third layout that we have is this wrap layout, which is pretty new. If I use it, what will happen is basically layout is a hybrid of the two. It says as long as I have space for them to be horizontally next to each other, I'm gonna keep them that way. But if for example, this auto layout starts to get smaller, you see it just drops them underneath. So if this is the size that I have, if I duplicate D, you see it will go underneath. But if this auto layout becomes wider, then it has room for them to grow on the horizontal. The next property of the auto layout is spacing. It's now called gap instead of spacing, but it's basically the same thing. And that is the spacing between the children inside the auto layout. So right now you see it's set to three, but if I click into here and say 50, for example, you see how it's spread those children and now there's a 50 gap between them. If I hover over them while it's selected, I can see those pink lines and it says 50. And I can also just hold it from the canvas and move it in and out. I can also select here and just scrub right and left. It can also be a negative number so they can kind of stack on top of each other. Now with spacing, we have two spacing modes. The mode we're using now is called packed. And that means that we decide what is the spacing, right? I can tap, type into here, I can change it on here. It's for me to decide. But what if we want Figma to decide for us? So if this auto layout were bigger, for example, I'll add a stroke just so we can see that that auto layout that they're in is kind of wide. What if I want the items inside to distribute themselves kind of equally? So I can go in here and try and find what that size is, but I can change my spacing mode instead of packed to automatic. I've got three ways of doing this. Way number one, instead of a number in here, I could just type in the word auto. And then you can see that it's changed. Yeah, so now I'm not controlling it, it's automatic. You can see over here in the graphical kind of element that gap is set to auto and you can see how the lines are now spread equally where before they were just packed together. So that was way number one, I can type in auto. Another way is if I select this kind of alignment area, this box and tap on X, on my keyboard that will toggle me between the two. And the third option is if I hover on this little gap area, there is a drop down, and I could just select auto. Now, just to show you why auto is really useful sometimes, it basically creates a really dynamic environment. So if my auto layout now becomes smaller or becomes longer, the items will just move according to the size of their parent rather than me having to go back and change the spacing. And now I wanna move on to the next section, which is the padding. I'm going to give my auto layout a bit of a background color. If I select my auto layout and I have controls for horizontal padding and vertical padding separately. So if I look at this vertical padding and I'm gonna type in 10. So you see what that's done is it's created a space here of 10 pixels between the end of the auto layout and the first child. And it does the same 
with the last child as well. And the same goes for the vertical padding. I can add, let's see, 40 on here and you'll see that happen straight away. I can control this from the canvas. I can also split them up. If I tap over here, I can have control of individual paddings. If I do want to control all of the paddings at once, horizontal and vertical, all I have to do is hold down command and then tap into this section. And then I can either just write an in one number, so let's say 10, and that will take over all of my sides. Or if I hold down command, tap in, I can use the commas to separate between the different sides of the padding and it's gonna go top, right, bottom, left. The next property of the auto layout is the alignment. So I'm gonna make my auto layout just a bit bigger than the elements inside so you can see this happen. Right now, and this is the default, it's gonna be set to align top left. But then if I change it to align bottom right, you'll see that all of the children kind of move down there. I can put them in the center, I can put them at the top the bottom. Now, if we are on a packed spacing, we will have nine options. But if we are on space between, which is the automatic one, I'll just tap in here and click on X to get that. I will only have three options. Yes, yeah, so it will be top, middle and bottom. Lastly, we do have some advanced settings for auto layout that live inside of here. One of them is excluding the stroke. And you can see this in this little graphic kind of showing us what's that, what does that mean? It means that it's just going to ignore the strokes and only look at the element itself. Uh, the other one is canvas stacking so if i have a negative value for my gap if i go in here i can change the order so is it first on top so a is on top and then going down or is it last on top so d is kind of the top one and the last one is aligning text baseline so you see i have an icon and then some text over here and the alignment is set to center if i align it to the bottom or align it to the top you can see how that little icon kind of moves but if i go into my advanced settings and select this align text baseline you see what happens, it kind of changes us. So this is now what we are using as our alignment. I can move it on the horizontal axis, but the baseline is just gonna be baseline to the text. So if I hover over the text, you see that line that comes underneath the letters. So that is what any other element will align itself to. So if I add a rectangle in here, I'm just tapping on R and dropping in a rectangle, make it a bit smaller. You can see that it aligns to the bottom of the text rather than the bottom of this whole kind of auto layout, yeah? So if I remove that, you'll see the difference really clearly. Yes, this aligns to the bottom of the bounding box, aligns to the top of the bounding box, center of the bounding box, or aligning to the text baseline. Lastly, one of the super cool things about auto layout is that I can move the children inside of it by using the arrow keys. So if I'm selecting this C right now, I can move right and left to move it inside of the auto layout. And if this was a vertical auto layout, I could do the same thing by using my up and down arrow keys. And now's the point where we exhale and say to ourselves, auto layout is not scary. Let's have a look at the most common use case for using an auto layout, which is just a button. So I have some text in here and let's turn this into a button. So I've put this text down and I'm just gonna tap on shift and A to put it inside of an auto layout. I'll give the auto layout a bit of a fill color and you can see that the default setting for an auto layout is 10, 10, 10 got 10 pixels of a gap or spacing, and then it's also got 10 padding all around. So what's great about using an auto layout for a button is how dynamic it is, right? So we don't know what the text is going to be, but because it's in an auto layout, it's gonna grow and shrink to accommodate for what I need. So if it's just a one, it will shrink for just one character, but if it's lots of characters, it will grow as much as I need it to. And even if I press enter, it will grow in the height as well as with the width. Now we're gonna look at different resizing modes for items inside of an auto layout. Now this bit can get a bit tricky, but once you understand the logic behind it, it's all just trial and error and finding exactly which combination you need to make magic. So over here, we've got an auto layout that just has this kind of black line around it. And inside of it, we've got four auto layouts. Okay, so each one of these little squares is an auto layout of its own. Each one of them has a different background color and inside it has a text box, yeah? so. Auto layout inside of an auto layout. You can nest them as many as you want. So when we look at the different resizing modes for items inside of an auto layout, we've got three modes. We've got hug, fixed and fill. Let's look at what each of those does. Let's look at this first auto layout. So over here in the kind of transform section of the design panel, you see that I have these drop downs underneath the width and the height. And right now the width and the height are grayed out, which means that I don't control them. Figma controls them. They are set to the hug content resizing type. Now, what does that mean? That basically means that this auto layout is gonna look at anything that lives inside of it and it's going to hug it. 
Now there is 15 pixels padding here and that's why it's not hugging the text itself. So let's remove that, okay? Clicking on command into here, zero. You see how it just like hugging everything that's inside of it. So if I remove this text, for example, it's gonna shrink, yeah? If I bring it back, it's gonna expand. And if I add some padding, so I'm selecting it, and then I'll add 15 pixels of padding. It will hug the content that's inside and then accommodate for the padding, yeah? So that is what hug content does. It's like the button we saw earlier. It's kind of the default for the auto layout and it just looks at the elements inside and resizes accordingly. Next one we're gonna look at is we're gonna do a combination of fixed and fill. So this orange one, I'm going to set the width of it to fixed. Look what happened. Now this is black. Now I can change this. So Figma is saying, I'm relinquishing control. It's up to you. You need to decide the width of this element. So it's gonna stay on 119, I'm fine with that. Let's look at what fill is going to do. So if I select fill and I'm just hovering over it, can you see those red lines? So Figma is giving me an indication of what is going to happen. Fill basically means that this element is going to fill up as much space as it can on this access. So this is the height. So if I select fill container, boom, you see the height grew and the height is still grayed out because Figma is in control. Yeah. And if the parent that it's in, so right, it's in this black kind of box in this black auto layout will become smaller. You see that that height becomes smaller as well. Let's have a look at kind of the opposite. I'm going to select this yellow box and I'm going to say in the height, fixed height, same thing that happened before with the orange one's width, right? Now this becomes typeable and I can select what the height is. What do we think is going to happen when we set this one to fill container on the width? Let's have a look. So when I tap on it, hmm, notice what happens. It's filling up as much space as it can. Remember within the auto layout, there are rules, right? So this yellow auto layout lives inside of this big auto layout, the one that has the black border around it. And it knows that there is a rule. It must maintain 30 pixels of a gap between its brothers and sisters, right? So it's saying, I'm gonna fill up as much space as I possibly can while maintaining 30 pixels here, whatever width this guy is, 30 pixels here, whatever width this guy is, 30 pixels here, whatever width this guy is. Now let's see what happens when I set this one to, to fill both width and height. So I'm gonna start with height first, fill container. It's gonna do exactly what orange did, gonna go all the way to the top. But what's gonna happen when I set the width to fill container? When I tap on it, you can see that yellow was affected and orange and red were not. Why is that? So red only cares about what's going on inside of it. It really doesn't care about anything external, only the internal. Orange's width is set to fixed, yeah? So I told it what width it's going to be. No one is gonna change that. Yellow, on the other hand, is set to fill. It's dynamic. It's like, well, if anything happens, I'll change. It's fine, it's cool. It's chill, yeah? So let's have a look if I select this big container and I move it around a bit, let's see how they react. So I'll start by just making it less tall. So decreasing the height and we can see already that orange and green are responding to it because they're set to fill height. But even if it becomes too small to handle, you can see that yellow and red do not care because yellow is on fixed height and yellow is listening to its master that told it to stay on 68 and red doesn't care because it only cares about what goes on inside of it. If I shrink it, you'll see, oh, green's gone, yellow's gone, but orange and red are staying strong. And that's because of the same reason. Red only cares about what's inside, Orange was set by me. All of this fixed fill and hug, they can be a bit weird to know which one to use when, especially if you've got a really complex auto layer going on with lots of things inside of it. But now you understand how it works and what they mean, and it's just trial and error now. If you have a kind of multi-layered auto layout with lots of, ne lots of nested auto layouts, there will be some combinations that are not allowed, but Figma will look after that for you. So sometimes you might set some auto layout to fill, and then you'll get a notification at the bottom letting you know, I've changed this one to fixed now because this is fill, so that one has to be fixed, yeah? So Figma will look after you, you don't have to worry about that. You know how I told you that auto layout basically tells the children how they should react and they can't really break that rule? Well, there is one way to break that rule. I have this grid auto layout over here that has these animal boxes in it. It's set to wrap, which means that if it becomes a bit smaller, the animals will just wrap underneath. And I wanna crown one of these animals. So let's say I wanna crown the elephant, okay? I'm gonna take this crown, which is just a frame, and I'll try and drop it. Mm, no, that doesn't work. 
Mm, no, that doesn't work. Ah, this doesn't work, right? Because once I drop this into this auto layout that has the animals in it, it's going to look at this as if it's another child of the auto layout and try and fit it in. So yeah, it's, it's keeping up with the spacing. It's doing all of that. Or these animals are also auto layouts. You can see elephant is an auto layout uh, and it has like the, the group inside of it and then this crown element, but it's not really working, right? So in order to break the rule of the auto layout, we can use something called absolute position. So absolute position, you will find it next to the X and the Y uh, in the transform section of the design panel. And you can see that they're grayed out because in an auto layout, we don't control the positioning. Figma does that for us. So I'm going to place the crown into the auto layout where the frame lives and just click on absolute position. And straight away, you can see that now I can select the X and the Y. And also in the layers panel, it gets this like visual representation. You can see those like corners around the frame shape. So we know it's using absolute position. So what I can do now is just move the crown into its place. I'm gonna use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Yeah, I kind of like where it is. So it's still inside of the elephant. It's not in the big auto layout. So it's connected to elephant. And that means that now if I select this animals auto layout and I make it smaller, or I make it bigger, so it will stay with elephant. One note about absolute position. When it came out, people got absolute position crazy and kept using it. If you're using lots of absolute position, sweetie, you shouldn't be using an auto layout, <laughs> okay? If everything is breaking a rule, then there is no rule, yeah? So just be mindful of that, that it's not something you should be using loads. It's there for very specific reasons and you should be cautious when using it. Now let's look at the last thing I want to touch on on auto layout and that is max and min width and height. So this is again pretty new, was launched in this config and it's super cool. Let me show you one use case when we can use it. So because this grid is on wrap, if I make it a bit smaller, so you kind of see what happened. It, I just moved it by like two pixels, right? I just moved it a tiny bit and now there's three rows but this is still kind of, the, the auto layout itself is quite big. There's no space for one more of these elements inside of it, but there's still loads of space here. We've seen this before. So if we go back to that bit where we talked about resizing, we can tell this, these elements to fill container, right? Instead of being fixed, so if I click on enter, I'm just gonna select all of the animals inside all of those children. Right now they're set to fixed and fixed, which means they will forever stay one, two, two, and one, two, two. But I want them to, take up as much space as they can, right? So when this auto layout does become a bit smaller, they can just grow into the space, right? At least in width, and then keep that 30 spacing between them. So let's try and see if that works for us, okay? I'm gonna click on enter to select all of them. And then instead of fixed, I'm gonna click on fill. Oh no! Ooh, not good, right? If you remember from the start of this video, when we were talking about layouts, the wrap setting will always try and fit everything in on the horizontal axis. And once it can't, it will open a new row. So because I set it to fill, it's saying, yeah, I'll just make them tiny. But we don't want them to be tiny, right? We want to set a minimum width, right? We're going to say you can grow as much as you want, but actually on the shrinking side of stuff, we want to give you a minimum width. So in order to do that, in the width section, you can see that now there's a drop down, and I can add a minimum width. And let's say one, two, two is our minimum. And straight away, they look normal, yeah? So let's see what that does. I'm gonna select my animals auto layout and make it a bit smaller. It's exactly what I wanted, isn't it? So now this child is 168.67, yeah? So it knows that it's allowed to grow, but if I make this smaller, oh, do you see that red line? So right now I've, I'm, I've reached the point where they're all one, two, two, and they know that that's the smallest they're allowed to get. So it shows me that red line saying we've, we we've reached the minimum. And now if I keep shrinking, they'll just accommodate for a new row, accommodate for a new row. And if I try and go less than that, nothing will happen. And because it didn't set a max width, they can grow however much they want, right? So you can see now those bottom two are, are really wide. And if I keep going, um, I'll have to, to go quite a lot to have it just in one row, but then you'll be able to see that they just keep, keep growing. And I can also make them stop on that side and setting maximum width. And obviously I can also do all of this with the height as well. And now it's time for our second exhale because now we are Figma Auto Layout Masters. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you learned a lot and now you can go away and make your designs amazing. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you wanna see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.